I'm Richard Young, and we are so excited to welcome you to the first ever Carnival Fashion Month in Trinidad and Tobago, CFM 2022. CFM Carnival Fashion Month was created because our carnival celebrations have been curtailed for the past two years because of the pandemic. That yearly period was taken from us when we would dress up, show off, and make style, even spending months getting our bodies in order to play we mass and play we self on the street. That release made the people of Trinidad and Tobago into some of the happiest people in the world. Carnival is an integral part of who we are and how we live and celebrate as Trinidadians. Today, we are delighted to partner with the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts to bring you this program that explores how over the decades, Carnival has become an essential part of our expression of self and our individual style. Gosh, you could feel it. You could feel it. So in our show today, we'll explore how Carnival has defined our identity through fashion and style. We will demonstrate how creativity and individuality are essential to maintaining our Trinbegonian cultural confidence. No matter where our people live in the world, they can attest to the feeling of Carnival in their blood. They can feel their yearning for that Carnival spirit that lives in us all this miraculous yearly festival where every creed and race will come together in peace, passion, and harmony, surrounded by the pulsating beat of soca, brass, and pan. This togetherness transcends skin color, creed, race, or financial status. We parade throughout the streets together as one. Our carnival culture can indeed be a powerful formula that can inspire the world. So Carnival Fashion Month was born to give us all an opportunity to dress up in the safety of our homes and still show off our style to the world using social media. From February 1st, we launched CFM 2022 and encouraged persons to post photos of themselves with the hashtags TTCFM 2022 or Carnival is Fashion or Carnival Fashion Month. And boy, did they post it was so fulfilling to realize that we found ourselves a way to build a community around the common need to show off the style in this reimagined carnival season. So, with that enthusiasm and energy we receive from the public, we are here to affirm and remind everyone that Trinidad and Tobago's carnival belongs to each and every one of us. Carnival is about playing your mask showing off your style. Carnival is about making a statement of self-expression, proclaiming who you are and how you feel by the way you dress. Whether you're dressing up for a home line, whether you're putting on sexy or casual just to chip down the road behind your pants side, or if you're finding yourself covered in colors, mud or oil in a juve band, Carnival is about expressing style and freeing a fashion designer who is considered as one of the distinctive talents of Caribbean fashion is Robert Young. His work is unique in the way he takes fabrics of different colors, shapes, and textures and stitches them together to create his own material, his own suit, his treatment as it were, producing stunning garments that show off style and make deep-reaching statements, nailing. One of the most revered, most renowned fashion designers in the region says, and I quote here, I think Robert Young of the Cloth 
is the design of the Caribbean. He's a genius. He's the only Caribbean designer I wear beside my own brand. I am proud to say that Robert is my brother. His work has been iconic and seen on many local and Caribbean celebrities for decades now and featured most recently in British Vogue magazine where the Prime Minister of the newly formed Republic of Barbados, Mia Motley, wore his garments for her interview. In this short clip, let's take a look at Robert's most recent work for the cloth as a fashion brand.
Beside being a fashion designer, Robert Young is also the designer and founder of Vulgar Fraction. Vulgar Fraction is a carnival band that has been around for over 20 years, reiterating the importance of making your own mass and playing your own mass. It's about portrayal, it's about depiction, it's about storytelling. I could remember the days when people would see or hear a topic and say, I'm playing that mass next year. Vulgar Fraction is committed to keeping this most important tradition of making mass embedded in our carnival culture. Hi, I'm Robert Young, I'm designer for the cloth and um, a person who has been working with the idea of um, like what our ancestors did, making mass for yourself and making mass, making mass on your own and encouraging people to do that. And that, I call that vulgar fraction because um, it's an odd thing. Um, and also it is anti-branding, anti anti-the um, regular thing that people figure that they have to consume a mass in a box. That um, we, we do what people used to do, make their own costumes sometimes. But well, we do it in very short periods. But we used to spend the time and say, I'm playing this mass next year and spend half the year making their costume. Well, Vulgar Fraction, I, I, what we do, I will come up with a concept, a group of writers that I think is relevant in this space at that point. Um, because like, the year when Nick shut down the, the oil industry, we had a bank called Nothing. The year that I started to engage with, um, with some, some people from outside to work in the business, I had a band called Playing White. Um, and this year, um, it's morning, mass, mass morning, Becoming Reads, which is about thinking about how people um, were processing all the things that they've lost, carnival, their family, their friends, um, the feeling of independence, the feeling of fresh air, the feeling of access to the beach. Um, so, so this is a morning mass because we present to another thing. Morning is something that is external. Um, and the, the idea of um, having people to Remember that they can make things and play because it's a play, a playing mass. You come and play and you make your costume with us. Um, like what people did before. And it doesn't have to be the traditional things that we know. The uh, Moko, the Sailor, because all those masks, all those kinds of masks were once contemporary and, and um, a statement of that time. So, um, the, cause there's like, say like, um, What's her name? Maya Lovelace and her sister. Maya. Um, I can't remember her sister's name. They have a band that they do, but they do what they call pretty mass and the feathers. And they go into, they, they play six or seven of them making their own costumes um, and taming, taming mass as theirs. Um, a big part of the population who has been alienated from carnival feel that the only way they can play mass is if it's offered to them in a box that they can purchase it like how they buy something on Amazon. Because some people just order their masks online now. Yeah, um, and it's an alienating thing. And Vulgar Fraction kind of demands that people do that. But also there's a, a big set of masks that still happens. All the, all the, all the bat masks and the Seda masks and the Jab masks and the, and the um, Borokit masks and the Moko Jumbies. All those costumes are made by the players, mostly. They're not designed by a designer and then and then, and then made. So we are the dark Indians. All those all those costumes are made by the player. Um, the the mistake is to try to package it for somebody else because you don't know what is somebody else that somebody else's, and you kind of taint it from your pers your pretense position of what is 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 um is is um tasty or amicable to somebody else. And we should just do our folk, folk tradition, folk mass, because like Sprang Along always say, Soka is a quaint folk music for us. Trying to package it for somebody else is another thing. Like, like say like um, um, Patrice Roberts' song, um, Drink Water. It is, it is, it's noticed that it's picking up all over the world because it's a song that is about cleansing and people need that now. It's like an ocean song, a song of, um, of, of the deity ocean water. 
um, and the power of that. So this this carnival I call it Nicosia. Because you always looking to see what is the elemental spirit in it. And this year is a female spirit, a Moshun, because of that song and, and how it how it is it will pick up all over the world. And I don't think she designed the song and wrote the song for it to be an international hit. But it was a song that is needed now. Old mass in school, you get a chance to make a mask. And I think that's the first time I put on that. I was able to make a mask with a paper bag. And I found it was beautiful and it was scary. And I put on a paper bag and frightened people. That whole carnival weekend. Until I started to do it in May and in June and all of that. Right? I tried to interfere my whole village. Right? So I wear a mask on my face since 81. And also that is... You cannot... The idea, like what Adelon says, um, you are... You are spirit. And your body is like a wreath, or your body is like a your body is like a garment that holds your spirit. So ma- masking where people you can become you can are not identif- you're not identified. You become you can become something else by just that masking where people don't know who you are, and you can engage in the world in a different way, right? With Bulgarian fashion, it's an independent band. Really, it's, it's so independent. And in each player is their own mask. Because you get the elements, the components, and then you make your costume the same way if you buy with a sailor mask. You get a, you get a sailor suit. You don't have to get it from the people. You get a tailor to make a sailor suit, and you buy your stuff and you dress it up. The Leonards used to have a band for years. I never got a chance to play in it. Um, Cleveland Leonard, he died about six years ago, eight years ago. Um, he had this band like for 50 years. It was a steel band that would go through for the spin on their own. They were, the, they were the first people to start Monday Night, ba- Monday Night Mass. The, the, the attempt that we're doing this year is that people can make a wreath, but not only make the, meat, make the wreath, you become the wreath. And, and according to our Marshall Spears, Spears spoke about that wreath is something that is twisted. And what COVID, what COVID and the pandemic has done is twist us into tiny spaces and it's time to undo. Um, so the idea is that um, you become a wreath but you have to then lay the wreath. So possibly by laying the wreath, you, you give up some, some piece of um, part of the trauma of doing in the last two years, um, of all, all the, serious, the serious disconnection people have been having with each other, or the fed upness so much that they deny that this is actually affecting people. So it's like, who are the dead and dead, and let me get back to our lives. But the people not, know, not recognizing the life we had, nobody dreamt it, and nobody wanted the way the world was set up. And um, she mentioned, uh, uh, um, Marsha mentioned it, that this is a portal for new world, and we have we have to dream that. And um, but you can't do it without grieving what this has been, and mourning and mourning it. So the masses attempting to do that. <laughs> Chango me fa, he baila. Eh me fa me fa, he baila me fa. Chango me fa, he baila me fa. Chango me fa, he baila me fa. A critical discussion took place recently that explored this concept 
and how important it is to fashion your own mass and use this creative energy that abounds in our people as an empowering asset to engender national pride and ownership of our Caribbean identity. This discussion entitled Morning Mass, Mass Morning, Becoming Wreaths, gathered some of our leading creative thinkers, Wendell Manwarin, Celeste Walters, Dr. Marsha Pierce, Adelon Braveboy, and Ardine Sergio in a riveting discussion. Let's listen in. We have a picture in our minds of what a wreath looks like. Leaves and our flowers twisted or wound around the circular frame. When we look at the history of the word wreath, that is where the word comes from, we find that it is linked to the word writhe. And with that word, we get another mental picture. To writhe is to contort the body, to twist and curl the body in response to emotional discomfort, mental anguish, or physical pain. In this collective trauma of the pandemic, many, if not all of us, have had cause to curl ourselves up. In an article published last year titled, The Pandemic Has Changed How We Sleep, writer Elizabeth Rhodes shares that a large percentage of people are now sleeping in the fetal position, head bowed and legs brought up tightly against the body. It is an instinctive posture human nature during hard times, a protective position to guard against further hurt. In this battle against the coronavirus, we are wound up, our bodies writhing in context of loss and the threat of demise. It is in this sense that I mean we are instinctively becoming wreaths. We are shrinking into small circles, our bodies becoming like tight fists, unable to grasp this moment or the next a sign of being emotionally closed off. And yet, what if we opened ourselves up in this challenging time, opened our future? Novelist Arundhati Roy says the pandemic is a portal, an opening or doorway for us to walk through, ready to imagine another world. This is not, therefore, a time of closure. We must match it by being open ourselves. I see becoming wreaths as a call or invitation from vulgar fraction to a conscious act of opening, a deliberate shifting of ourselves from small tight circles to something monumental, an intentional acknowledgement of ourselves and each other, a reaching inward and a reaching out. To see ourselves as wreaths is to widen the circle, to remember and include our ancestors, to recognize those lost to us years ago, Last month, last week, yesterday, today. It is to widen the circle to honor those still with us. A wreath for the dead and the living. An infinite loop that is more than endings. A cycle powerfully marked by healing and beginnings. A celebration of life. The circle or wreath as motion, as movement in contrast to the paralysis or the going nowhereness that immense grief <clears throat> can cause. It is with this understanding that I chose to collaborate with Vulgar Fraction to have my students at the University of the West Indies undertake as their course assignment this sense of becoming wreaths, to engage in this deliberate act. Learning is itself an act of becoming that always takes us into the future, anticipating a tomorrow. I wanted, therefore, to weave these acts of becoming together. We often think about education in terms of the intellect, the mind, but learning also takes place at the dimensions of emotion and the spirit. To ask my students to consider becoming wreaths is to be aware of their wholeness, the fullness of their humanity. Given the existing health protocols, including the practice of social distancing, my students will not participate in a physical street procession, yet we will still process. We will attempt to work through and work out what we are feeling. We will attempt to reimagine ourselves more broadly, self as a community, a great circle charting itself with the art of mass. I think the two years of no real carnival is a missed opportunity to examine what the carnival is and really say, well, 
You know, they talk, we're talking about we might lose this spot. Mm. How that could happen? Our carnival is not a jokey little two by four mm. carnival happening in a little park where people jumping up with 5,000 people. Our carnival is everywhere, all over. You know? Who in charge of all that? We. We, we make the carnival, the people, you know, and people need to reconnect to that. So for me, the relevant thing is people need to understand that carnival is us, is ours. Who's looking out for the Imagineers? Who's looking out for the people who have real ideas, not things that you see online that we could duplicate and replicate? You know, I talk about the carnival imagination growing up in Belmont, just up the street there. And you would use your imagination to make a mass. You didn't go online because it had no online then, or you didn't go in Samru's because Samru's didn't have everything you needed. Mm -hmm. A dragon didn't have a store where you could go and buy dragon scales. <laughs> you had to make the scales. You understand? And as a carnival imagination, it took time. When Earl describes it painstakingly. And even Aldrich back then was doubting whether it makes sense to play this kind of mass. So once we start doubting, there it goes. And when the, the grandson or the, the son of the dragon see him slaving over his scale and what he get at the end of it, why, what did happen to him? So I say, where's the grandson of the midnight robber? Where's the grandson of the, of the dragon? You know where they are? Holding rope and serving drinks. That's where they are. And if that is not indictable, then what is? So it, you can't say that you've seen that passed on in the legacy of the greats. Mm, no, it hasn't been passed on. Let's be real. Let's be honest. Whatever pockets of retention, of real retention, they are, we have to preserve them. We have to ring fence Paramin. We have to ring fence the Alfreds. We have to ring fence all these people that actually bring the real vibes. In academia, there's a lot of investigation, but in academia is not going to bring it back to life. Mm -hmm. yeah? It had to start with the young uns. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a living tradition, right? And kind of a mass don't make sense. You can't apply logic to it. Mm. It's a vibration, it's an expression. People slave, people make mass in a space like this and then study, oh, how are I the mass out? And then <laughs> just get the mass <laughs> out and deal with it after, you know? <coughs> so there's, a, there's an aspect of this thing that, I, I say, how are you going to manage something if you don't even understand what the thing is? Yeah, so even we, I, I, don't, I didn't start off with all this awareness of what it is. We started off real ignorant and we had to pay the price for it. You know, when we did Blue, my good friend Franca wrote a piece in the, in the papers and said we were naive when we painted up the um, people's statue there. And I find it looked better blue than how it was before. <laughs> but we were naive, you know, we were naive. We didn't know, we didn't anticipate thousands of people responding to a song and how you're controlling that. We got away with our lives doing blue, you know? So we've learned a lot along the way and we try to put that in everything we do and just stay the course, you know, where they get a play, where they ain't get a play, where they people, you know, respond to it out of, because they're popular, whether people respond to it because that's where they feel the vibe, you know, and we've come to take comfort in that, you know? So my approach to art making, I see art making as an expressive behavior as opposed to a skill. So I've really spent the last several years on learning quite a bit of my formal art education. And I think it's really important that very early on in this conversation that we make a distinction between grief and between mourning. And I'll be more than happy to provide that explanation. So grief is the internal process. Grief is that agglomeration of complicated emotions that we will experience immediately following a loss. And there is no timeline for this grief. This, this grief. So grief is the internal process, those feelings of confusion, of sadness. Mourning is the externalization of that grief. And historically, Western grief theories have omitted people of color. We know that across cultures and age groups that grief is processed differently. And in order for us to really contend with our grief, we cannot separate it from a sociocultural context. You know, so the question that I've really been asking is how do we now be less in opposition with our grief and now utilize the tools that we have in order to process the grief? The tool in question being carnival. I consider carnival to really be an appropriate 
portal to facilitate a movement away from pathology and towards a model of wellness that is specific to our cultural context. So I call this cultural responsiveness. I do not use the term cultural competency. I think it's a very troubling word, that word competency, because it implies that there is this, this um, understanding to be attained. You cannot be competent in somebody else's culture. Okay, so responsiveness is meeting a person where they're at with their culture, trusting that they know what they need in the space, and responding to suit and supporting that process. Using this tool of carnival, I think um, it's, as I said, it's a portal. It's a space for us to not only be in community with each, with each other, but it's a space for, for processing. It's a space for memorializing. And I'm really looking forward for the range of ideas that we bring in the panel this evening. So thank you. I just want to express a second verse of a song that I wrote three years ago. I had the honor to bring this song to life with an icon that will always live on in my heart, the late singing Sandra, mm. um, known in the Calypso fraternity as mother. Mm -hmm. No one can deny these vibes that we're feeling when we express with colors and characters juve morning. The rhythm section does shake we. Calypso music does move we. The harmonies of the steel drum does make we power come down. We hype up just like a flambo. There is something that mother must tell you. We are the spirit of Kanbule. And today is the right day. Freedom to make we dance. Freedom to make we prance. Freedom to make we chant. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Freedom to make we sway. Freedom to dingole. Jump and whine and just steal it. Tis we season to break away. Mm -hmm. I just had to start with that because... I find you should have sing it. Show <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You could real sing. I know, you know that. You know, I'm, I'm quite very emotional, especially when I have to sing that part of the song yeah. because she was someone that was very dear to me. Um, she's the one that really was very much instrumental to my development in the art. And so I must salute her first as an ancestor. There is something good, so good about this feeling. This feeling. Carnival time. We not here to ancestral corner. When the rhythm hit me, melodies them are rest with. So God does make we let go. Make we dance like a shampoo.
became more and more something that you partake in if it comes in a box. Um, and the more people who do that is people, more people who never were part of part of carnival in the first instance and were invited to be part of it, which 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 is useful. But they're only doing it if they get it in a box. They're not going to go through the ritual of trying to make their own costume and express themselves. So, so there is fashion in carnival, and that's there. The, the strong creativity is, is, is making, tapping on the traditional things and building off of it. Like the people who upstairs, the, um, the Mokoso Mokos and the, and the um, Touchy Sky Moko Jambis and things, they, they tap on the tradition and they, they, they work, work on, on playing, making the costume um, speak about now. So I think they have a big, they have a massive COVID response in their carnival. They have, they have, take the job and, um, a bush lady with, 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 with bush medicine and all of that they, they, um, they, they, they portray. So it's not just the loss of life, but it's the loss of livelihoods and the loss of sense of self and the loss of a sense of belonging and a creeping sense of the widening gap, you know? And then another young producer by the name of Blasio Vanguard reached out and he had a very haunting track. And um, he was insistent that we do something and thank, I thanked him for his insistence the other day. And then Stanton came around one day and I played the track for him and he made it. He said, hold on to your boy right over your head, how to dance, how to make a blow. Hold on to your roots and your culture, flowing deep inside of your soul. Hold on to the cold tales of bread and justice, equal rights for one and all. Trick and I'll come down in the power of love, fire coming down, tell them. And I say, reparation time. Memoration time, emancipation time, Lord is Cambule time, hold on. So that hold on became the cry. And that whole thing of idea of holding on to what is there, holding on to what is true, holding what, on to what is essential, guided by Tony's, you know, very cryptic words. And the final thing I want to add is that Tony signed off on the conversation by saying, after we talk carnival, we talk West Indies, we talk cricket, we talk politics, we talk all kinds of things. I say, what are you talking about this pandemic boy? And he says, there is a possibility for there to be a settling into the essence of the universe. The effort that may be put into trying to make this happen is the main obstacle to it happening. Take it light. Please stay safe. Juve forever. Relax so far, right? Wow. So that's... that's that's what we're working with. A reinvocation of the mission as it was in the beginning. Raps Warriors on a mission to spread the word. Power the word and the word. For the edification of the children and the healing of the nation. And the example of Lancelot K. Boulain and the power of resistance. Celebrating 25 years of making music. What a privilege, what an honor, what a blessing. First they were four, now we're three. John Isaacs, R.I.P. Giving thanks for all that came before and all that is yet to come. Hold on. This last year for me was a, was a year of figuring out things and mourning and grieving certain things. Um, and last year, um, I felt I needed to do nothing for Carnival and notice the space. Um, so that's like listening to just fan music and what that would bring up. So I, I, will, I will literally cry listening to like Despots. Um, and I felt that something needed to happen because there is a way I hear people talk about the pandemic. Um, but it's not happening, it's not real. Um, the nihilist part of grief. Um, that people are, however, let whoever that to die, let them die. I hear people say, whoever that cancer, let them die. And it's like we lost some kind of um, connection to people. We lost connection to, to ourselves. We lost con con connection to our bodies. Because emotions are just a, a hint of what is embedded in your body. Um, so the process of making the mass, you could find a way. Because what I've been doing, processing whatever I have to feel these days, I've been walking. I walk every morning up this mountain behind St. Joseph. I knew from since I was a boy, I never, could, ne never climbed. So I did it every day, um, and which is a kind of interrogation. So, but the part of Vulgar Fractions Mass is not, I will think about ways of making the costume. But the person who's playing has to figure out how they can get their hands back. So creativity is not mine as an artist. 
Creativity is every other human. Fashion houses worldwide look to the indigenous and organic expressions of style to inform the looks we wear today. The carnival aesthetic is an influential part of our identity and impacts our sense of individualism, but it also inspires the popular fashion houses and trends that we follow around the world. Today, as we celebrate Carnival Fashion Month in a time that has challenged many of us to find our sense of self and our, our sense of individuality, having to adopt new design thinking and reinventing who we are have become critical in claiming our space today. This exploration reminds us of our unique culture and birthright and signals to future generations the significance of honoring and owning our rich carnival tradition and heritage. Thank you for joining us today. I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts of Trinidad and Tobago for their endorsement in celebrating our first Carnival Fashion Month as we look forward to CFM 2023. I'm Richard Young, reminding you that Carnival is fashion too. Subscribe. Remember to hit that bell to get notifications for more things tempo.